Okay, um, welcome to the Morkings and Smith Media Summit. This is the advertising panel, uh, and I'm delighted that to say we have the great panelists uh, today joining us. Uh, we have Evan Horowitz, who is the founder and CEO of Movers and Shakers, a great agency in the States. According to Adweek, in fact, it's the fastest growing marketing agency in the world. Uh, its mission is simply to spread joy. So helpful, hopefully that's exactly what he'll do today. Uh, we also have Chloe Davis with us, who in September 2021 joined Gen Lucky Generals as head of social impact with a focus on building a sustainable, diverse and inclusive company culture and output. It's an interesting role because you wouldn't have to track back too many years ago where such a role might have been viewed as maybe opaque. But today it's absolutely germane. It's germane to Lucky Generals and it should be germane to all businesses. So we're very lucky to have Chloe and looking forward to her thoughts. Uh, Jen McCabe joins us from Armanino in the West, on the West Coast of the US. It's a partner member of More North America. Jen's focus is on advertising in the media sector. She would has self-styled um, savior of creativity uh, and has led the women's advancement at Armanino. We're also joined by Matias Tejero, CEO of More Tejero in Argentina. Uh, Matias has had extensive experience in the advertising sector particularly uh, in, uh, around the LATAM region, and we look forward to a perspective from, from that. And finally, we have Ian Graham, a partner in the media practice at Moore Kingston Smith in London. Ian has spent the last 20 years providing commercial and compliance advice uh, to independent marketing services businesses in London. What Ian doesn't know about clients, no one, uh, no one else does. So we have a great uh, array of input. Uh, I think I'd like to start, I mean, my, my background is advertising, so I'm going to start right in there and say that the foundations of advertising have always been, and possibly will always be, simply culture, talent, and capabilities. And by capabilities, I mean the marriage of available technology of the day with ideas born of a strategy. So culture, talent, and capabilities. And clearly, with so much going on in the world uh, that I don't need to outline, the question I want to ask, and I want to ask, start with Chloe, is simply this. What keeps you up at night? Robert, that's not a small question. <laughs> uh, you know, I I think, you know, I've always said that we are the, the storytellers. We are the people that get to visualise everyone's stories. And it's a an honour and a privilege to do that. But I think that the last 24 months have really shown us which stories actually matter and how can we make sure that this is indicative and throughout our work, but that that starts with our people. And so when we think about the diversity of people that we have in our business, where they come from, what does that represent and who they represent? Um, it's all a little overwhelming. We've had so much happen in the world. Um, we've I call it a panini because that's how my mental health would like to take it on. But we've been through a pandemic that's been a universal leveler. It's really made us introspective and think about who we are as people, who our businesses are, what are our values, and how do we make sure that that is reflected in the work. So we're really thinking about who we are and what represents us. And that starts, like you said, with our people. So where do our people come from? You know, are we as inclusive and diverse as we should be um, now that we are more informed about what diversity and what inclusivity really looks like? And for me, that always starts with belonging. You know, if you create a place where people truly feel like they belong, this is a place that celebrates difference. And within advertising, we're very good at doing that on the outside, but actually it's been a real opportunity in the last 24 months to look at internally, what does that look like? And we haven't always got that right. And I think that's really made for some very difficult conversations that require us to be vulnerable. And that's not something that I don't think we're always new to. So uh, when you ask what, what makes me stay up at night, it's really about the work now. And we think about social change and that outside of the lights it's about movements it's about what's happening on the ground it's about really making sure that the energy is shifting that we're talking about the environment that we're talking about things that matter to people and that those people have an expectation that when we tell their stories through an advertising lens that all of that is included and it's done authentically and transparently um, and that means that you have to have that knowledge 
within your business. And so I think that's really a place of how do we do that and how do we do that honestly, but also to do it well. And that requires education. So I, I feel like we have a big job to do, but there are so many of us that are now on this journey and roles like mine um, will help because it brings in a point of difference, but I'm not, um, I'm not the guru for everything. I'm a firm believer in community and it's about how does my role span um, and share best practice with somebody else so that this knowledge is coming through into our industry in a way that it was never fully funneled and tapped into. It was always kind of something that you consulted on, but now it's actually foundational. And this foundational work will then impact everything else that we do. That's fascinating. I love the idea of the need of belonging and, and work that actually stories that actually matter uh, and acknowledging vulnerabilities uh, and, and putting reflecting movements through the work. And you use two words there, which take me on to the next question, authentic, authentically and transparently, which moves me seamlessly. Evan, I would like to ask you a question. So movers and shakers are, 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 think to, are considered, as I understand it, to be the lead in the industry, the industry lead in the, in the use of tip and working with TikTok and TikTok marketing. I think you've had over 150 billion views amassed over three years, if, I'm, if I've got my numbers correct. Um, so in that context, with that expertise, and given what Chloe has just said, and the need for authenticity and transparency and movements, how do you think the role of TikTok will evolve in 2022? Yeah, well, it certainly has become a dominant force in the industry, it, uh, almost out of nowhere. It's, it's crazy to watch. Um, a few a few trends that we're watching this year as TikTok continues to grow and evolve. Um, first, I just pick up on Chloe's point about storytelling and whose stories we're telling. TikTok has had a representation problem that they're uh, continuing to work on, and uh, all of us who work uh, in and around the platform continue to support that, making sure that we're elevating diverse voices um, and uh, and giving exposure to people of all different types of backgrounds. Uh, so that's something that I think is going to continue to be a focus, at least for, for movers and shakers and, and for many other players in TikTok. Um, other trends that we're seeing on the platform, really a continued evolution from where it started for marketers, which was very upper funnel to lower funnel, uh, which has been what a lot of us have been asking for for a long time. Uh, TikTok has always been a great place to get your brand exposed, uh, to build buzz around the brand um, from more of an upper funnel perspective. And over the last year, they've added a lot of new features focused on e-commerce and uh, live shopping is finally starting to roll out in, in a bigger way. So that's very exciting, I think, for brands that are looking to actually be able to drive some, uh, some conversion through the platform more than ever before. So that's going to continue. Um, and the last thing I would say just about where TikTok is headed is it's pulling the industry along with it. I think we all see there's a bit of a whirlwind around TikTok with other platforms trying to figure out how they can catch up. It's having a very profound effect on Instagram, for example, with Instagram's push uh, to authenticity, as you said, Robert, also to more video content. So uh, as TikTok evolves, we see it pulling the rest of the landscape, too. And that's that's pretty exciting. It's definitely shaking things up. Yeah, that does sound exciting. Um, I won't ask you to comment on some of the other platforms. You might get in trouble. Um, but if, if we're picking... Fantastic. We love them all. Yeah, yeah absolutely awesome. Um, Jen, if I can turn to you, um, I mean, there's, there's quite a few areas we've touched on there, and, and you spend your time advising Evan and, and, and many other clients. I mean, what is keeping you up at night, if I may ask? Evan that? and Chloe are keeping me up at night. Um, <laughs> Well, I, I watch what Evan and his teams are doing. I think it's fascinating that Movers and Shakers is actually putting on webinars to teach other ad agencies how to use TikTok. To me, that's just crazy that, that first of all, that he would do it and give away his secret stuff. So, of course, as his advisor, I'm like, don't do it. Um, and I look at TikTok and I try to understand it. So what keeps me up at night is trying to keep up, period. So I find myself going down the rabbit hole of TikTok, looking for brands that are advertising on it to see how they're doing it. Um, one of the things that's making me nutty is uh, the evolution of blockchain technology and cryptocurrency usage in our industry. If I were a media strategist and a media buyer and someone gave me a media budget and said, Jen, go out and spread this brand around, 
I think in 2022, it's going to be critical that our media people, our budgeting people understand the value of cryptocurrency because certain advertisers are starting to accept it. Interestingly, last year, they wouldn't accept it because it was too volatile. In fact, some advertising uh, channels wouldn't even allow crypto advertising on their medium because it was almost like advertising a drug, uh, almost like it should have been monitor. Well, now we're going to have to figure out what it's worth and how we spread that around. Um, I saw that uh, Time Magazine is making the, their front, their cover page an NFT now, and they're accepting crypto to pay for subscriptions. It, it is coming. We can't just have media buyers, strategists, planners like we used to. We have to have people who are experts in crypto. And since I'm in accounting, like Ian, it means I got to figure out how to count it. I've got to figure out the debits and credits in crypto. So that makes me quite nervous. It's coming at us very, very fast. Um, when Chloe talks about uh, ESG, I, I worry about, I have hundreds of agencies that I work with. Some of them are already leading culture. My advertising agencies lead cultural charges. Our politicians are not. Um, business has to lead the charge and their advertisers help businesses lead the charge. So if agencies aren't on the bandwagon with ESG, they're losing out. In 2022, if they don't have B Corp status or an ESG strategy, they will be left behind. It's table stakes at this point because of what Chloe said the last two years. It's, it's critical now. So I worry that my little agencies who aren't thinking about it or are big agencies that have maybe older um, founders don't understand that they have to get on it right now. Right now. Matthias, are you feeling that same anxiety from, from a LATAM perspective? Yes, the issues are, are quite similar. Maybe in the race for talent agencies in the region have a great challenge competing with lower budgets and are facing a new issue for them as companies from other countries are hiring creatives and talented professionals directly, not, not the agencies as they used to be. So it is getting harder every day to find new talent and they fight back searching for professionals far from their office too and opening branches in other markets to get new business there. And as Shen said, it's not enough to find creative people. They need to be adaptable to constant changes and unstable environments. Here in Latin America, we all have a PhD in an unstable environment, but it's not enough to adapt. People need to be able to understand the new trends to, to be ahead of them, the language of TikTok or metaverse, and at, at the same time uh, of knowing how to use blockchain when, when trading, for example. Uh, but it is not easy for, uh, to compete for talent with lower budgets. So as you are going to stress your cash flow in that race, it's, it's key to try to keep your KPIs in order as much as possible, not to end with other issues or not being able uh, then to cover your operational cost. You make a great point there, Matthias. You mentioned the importance of on the impact on talent. And that was one of the, the, the foundations I referenced up front about uh, uh, what constitutes advertising. And you've all mentioned it. But when you start thinking about they need to understand NFTs, blockchain, crypto, they need to understand the latest the evolvement, the, the evolvement, the revolution in social platforms and what's, what's in and what's not in and how best to use it. And frankly, just how to treat people to, to keep them inspired and loyal and, 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 and uh, bring their A game. So my question, I'm going back to you, actually, Evan. You're the fastest growing agency um, uh, reportedly in, in, in the world. So you're hiring a lot, I imagine. How, how, that must, how tough is that then? There must be a big talent challenge for you. Actually, you know, with the great resignation and the crazy imbalance between supply and demand in our industry, with, it seems like every agency is trying to hire a lot right now. So it, it is a big challenge. Um, for us, the, the best way that we found is to just differentiate through our culture. We have a, a really unique approach to the culture that we, we create. As you mentioned earlier, Robert, our mission is to spread joy. And that's very attractive to a lot of talent um, that permeates through the way that we work. Uh, so we, I think, have really succeeded in building a uniquely collaborative and uh, constructive uh, environment. And it also affects the work that we put out there. You know, we're very selective about the clients that we accept, the brands that we'll represent. Um, that's something that's very attractive to talent. You know, the, the fact that we've turned away a lot of clients who don't match our values and what we're trying to put in the world. 
uh, and that we let clients go when it's not a good fit. Maybe the brand is a good representation of what we're doing, but the the way that that particular client team works isn't uh, joyful and positive. And so we, we do let the number of clients go when, when things don't work out. Uh, and as a result of those things, I think people feel the difference here. Uh, I'm new to the industry myself. This is the first time I've ever worked at or in an uh, agency. Um, so just a little bit figuring out as I go along. But I do hear from the team that that um, joy, positivity, collaboration uh, is not necessarily common in our industry. So um, I'm excited to be doing things a little bit differently, I hope. Chloe, I'd love to hear what you have to say about that. <laughs> Um, uh, Evan, like you, I'm 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 new, and it's been a baptism of fire um, in advertising. Which, strangely enough, um, I my, I understand completely, but I kind of wanted to jump off of one of the things that you said, which is a collaboration. You know, collaboration is key inherently in people. We connect, we find community, and so this importance that comes through our work in advertising, but also. Uh, The internet has guaranteed that we are so informed now on who is good, who is bad, who's got um, some messiness that actually we can't afford to, as advertisers, align ourselves with people whose values don't match who we are representing outside. Um, And when you said, you know, it's making that decision to uh, stay with people, actually to let people go and have that value inherently in the work. That's been one of the biggest things that's come out of the last two years. You know, who is really reflective of, they might be an amazing organization, but actually how they treat the people inside isn't necessarily the right thing, or there's been histories of, you know, client cases. And so when you do this work, even if you do the amazing work, actually, does that, does that, undervalue what we are creating as advertisers and it comes back to that bit I said it's the responsibility part of we can't just make the nice pretty things actually value is inherent in everything that we do and so it's about how are we actually making sure that the work that we do has value for the stories that we're telling because that's the thing that people will pick up with and that's how brands become bigger and better but um I kind of throw it to throw it back to the first thing that I was laughing at you know, isn't it about time that we had a little bit of disruption and a little bit of change? I think that's that's the uncomfortable place that we're in the most is that, you know, it's it's been like, you know, Jen mentioned before, sometimes it's been a same the same set of voices who have been in the highest positions determining and being the voice of everybody else. And sometimes they're not as well informed as they might believe and they're telling stories on behalf of other people and not telling the right stories. So the more that we will have difference within our industry, new perspectives, and, you know, I, I, Jen, in the pre-briefing, you were saying, you know, I'm a, I'm a woman at this highest level, but actually in this role, like, that's keeping me up at night too. Like when we have to be visible, but also the representation that comes with it too. The more that we have other gens within our industry, the easier that it gets, but also the more difference and more beautiful because we're all going to have a different expect perspective um, that makes our industry more rich. Um, and that's how we continue to make more, more better creative work because it's diversity of thought. Which is really the ultimate point of the whole industry better ideas to grow our clients' business. And you you, you, you brought up a great point there, the, 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 the collision or the, 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 the partnership of values and value. Uh, you know, it's, it, it, a, a truth of advertising should be that an agency's values will ultimately determine its value. Um, and, and, and this plays to, to, to a lot of the conversation. So I want to pull focus again and say we have social impact, we have the role of technology, we have the talent challenge, um, all of these coming together. Ian, from a from your vast experience of dealing with, <laughs> is this something? Is this is this in tune with what you've experienced? Yeah, I mean, yeah, definitely. Uh, the, I think the, I mean, if I you've left it quite broad there, Robert. So maybe I'll just like focus in on one of them. But the the talent talent issues in particular. I mean, a, a, a few of the panelists have have touched on. Um, you know the need for agencies to kind of live and breathe what they're um, what what they're what they're sell, what they're selling to to brands for that authenticity. But actually, I think what is and and that hundred percent agree with that. I think what is really interesting is how that impacts on 
you know, the ability to attract and retain talent, because ultimately that's what that is the core of any successful agency, right? You you can't name any successful agency over the last 20 or 30 years that does isn't absolutely chock full of incredible talent. And Chloe, actually, you touched on something earlier, which I think was really interesting, where you said people doing a um, like your role is is still a point of difference um, in in that respect, which for me i think that's quite interesting is that that is that where we are as a as a sector at the moment where that is still a positive point of difference and how long how long does that last before just the the lack of having somebody in your role and making sure that um, diversity and inclusion is being authentically lived in agency land not being lip service to how long is it before that isn't a positive point of difference but merely the absence of it is a massive negative point of difference and 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 at that point and already surely you know the impact that has on the ability of of those agencies not only to be taken seriously by their clients but to be taken seriously by their potential talent and and their existing talent because that seems to me to be you know potentially an existential threat for agencies that that can't get that right and you know the, there's there's always you know a, a a battle for good talent has always been there in this sector but is is this the is this the ground that it's being fought on now um or, or is it something different i i think for me that's what's quite quite interesting at the moment robert but certainly everything you know and that and that's you know central to everything that we've talked about already yeah, thank you. And I, I think there's a lot of commonalities there. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to close with a very, very simple question to each of you. Is the advertising industry an industry in crisis or an industry in flux? Um, I think that if advertising agencies are to survive and be creative, which means being on the edge all the time, thinking of the newest thoughts, that you should be in a state of flux, or we at Armanino call it VUCA, which is volatility, uncertainty, complexity, and ambiguity. If you don't live like that in the agency world already, you're stale. So we should grab onto it and lead the charge at every turning. Very good. Chloe, crisis or flux? Damn, I was hoping that you'd go to one of the others first. <laughs> um, I would say that we're in a flux but that we just need to lean in a little bit. I think to answer Ian, we are, we're doing too much as a reaction and not being proactive. You know, we're in a place where, you know, when, when we started talking, I mean, everyone will agree, when we started talking about diversity and inclusion, suddenly everyone had a diversity and inclusion specialist, but were they actually qualified? So, I mean, I'm qualified for my role. I went through a very you know, robust um, recruitment, but it's to make sure that when we create these roles and we're actually thinking about these changes, that the world is changing, that we have the right people to do that and that we make space for that and we don't just get these people box tick and then try to carry on as we've always been. So absolutely flux, it's newness, but that comes with it an element of education and we all have to keep doing that. No one is ever finished. So I think the industry needs to remember that we're not finished. There's actually so much more, but we also have to do a bit of leaning in and a bit of education with that too. And that's how we'll be great. Cool. Matthias, are we in crisis or in flux in Latin America? I think in crisis, but but meaning for crisis and opportunity, something that is evolving with new environment, a change in culture and, and behaviors as never had happened in decades. A crisis for good to shake the roots. Uh, new ways and languages for advertising and marketing communications, new media and new available technology for the ones that are prepared preparing themselves uh, and, and are keen to embrace the change. I am really optimistic about the times to come. In, in media and advertising. Optimistic, optimistic crisis. Evan, you have the last word. What do you, what's your prognosis? Well, as a newcomer into the industry, it's hard for me to say that there's a crisis. From my perspective, things are going great, but um, I think it is say, it's telling that the fastest growing agency right now is founded by two people who have no agency experience. So certainly there's clearly flux going on and I'm not sure if that amounts broadly enough to a crisis, but if I was at one of the big traditional agencies, I would probably be feeling some crisis. 
it's going to be a, it's going to be a crisis for some people that don't get this right that's for sure yeah. it's like, uh-huh. you know a comet was a crisis for the dinosaurs and an opportunity for plenty of other things oh it is <laughs> it's, it's also you know it's not just finding talent it's losing the non-talent and we you know it's a crisis for the non-talent to do and everybody knows you know when someone goes from one place to another place you know why and then it's kind of like fighting against that and I think that you know we're we're much smaller than I think people think that we are it's and a everybody very talks. small world Chloe <laughs> yeah. everybody talks. I always say in LA if you don't know me you don't know anybody <laughs> Um, but it's right. exciting. It is exciting. And, you know, I like the little mic drop, Evan. Cute. Um, but it's, but it is, it's, you know, you are, you are only as good as the people at the top. And I think everyone's really thinking about what does that look like for them now in a way that they never had to, because if the work was good and you kept getting the work, you never really had to think about yourself. You just put it out. And now that matters just as much as what you put out. So, um, yeah, for some people, it, it really is a crisis. And for others, it's, you know, because you think with a flux mentality, that's how you that's how you carry on winning. It's quite a it's quite a um, what have you done for me lately sector as well. So, you know, if being great five years ago is not going to not going to help you very much, help you very much now. That's, I think that's what makes it quite exciting uh, terrifying maybe is a better word i don't know <laughs> thank you but thank you very very much i mean I'd, I'd like it's an agent it's an industry i worked in for 30 years i have great heart for it i love ideas and i love the collisions that you are required to make the ideas but you have to do it as a team you have to have a family principle you have to keep an eye on you all you have is people all you have is talent uh, and you take your eye off that for a second and it's a house of cards um, and so I wish you all the very, very best of luck with this. I really hope you, you, you turn that flux into opportunity. And thank you for taking part. Thank you, Robert. Thanks. Thanks. Robert. Thanks.